In 2019, the Toronto Blue Jays rotation was a joke. The only serviceable pitcher out of the bunch was Marcus Stroman, but he was shipped off to the Mets halfway through the season, leaving the 1-5 through five looking a little something like this. Trent Thornton, Aaron Sanchez, Jacob Wagespeck, Clay Buckles, and Clayton Richard. But for the majority of the season, these guys missed time. Pretty much everyone who started for the Jays that year doesn't have a job right now in the bigs. In fact, 10 different players started five or more games for the Jays that year. The point is, it was the weakest link on the team. If every single one of your starters has a four plus ERA, you are going to get nowhere near the playoffs. That 2019 rotation had barely any money invested in it. Let's look at how much the one through five cost. For this, I'll be using the projected one through five at the start of the year. There was a total investment of just under $20 million. Now I know what you're saying, that's because they weren't planning to compete. And the guys they brought in were just there to eat up innings. And I completely agree with you. But I'm bringing this up as a reference point to show you just how weak this area of the team was just a few seasons ago. Heading into 2023, the rotation is finally solidified. The two headliners in Manoa and Gosman are some of the best in the American League. Bassett is an always reliable number three, and Jose Barrios is a huge bounce back candidate for next year. Sure, his 2022 couldn't have gone much worse, but his career shows that he should progress back to his mean of around a 3.5 ERA. And lastly, another huge bounce back candidate in Kikuchi. He's looked solid this spring and hopefully he can carry that momentum into the regular season. This 1-5 through five is projected to make just under $90 million this year. And yes, this includes Hunjin Ryu who will be making $20 million. This figure is a far greater amount than that of the 2019 team. The rotation is now the 5th most expensive in baseball, only trailing the Potters and Yankees by a couple million for 3rd place. And honestly, it's so great to see the front office acknowledging the need for starting pitching because after 3 or 4 years of begging for it, we finally have it. All right, now what you're here for. This is exactly why the Jays could very well be the top rotation in the American League next year, at least the number three. Let me explain. The top two rotations last year were the Astros and Yankees. And as you can see, they put up incredible numbers, but they aren't unreachable for this Jays group. This is all hypothetical, but let's take a look at what Baseball Reference projects the Jays one through five to do in 2023. Other than the Jays 3.61 ERA, all the other stats are fairly similar. But that's including the projections of Barrios at a 4.23 ERA and Kikuchi at a 4.58 ERA. Meaning Manoa, Gosman, and Bassett are really tying down the one through three. Let me show you just how well. In the case of the three aces, that being Manoa versus Rodon and Framber Valdez, Manoa had the best season out of the bunch in 2022. He had the lowest ERA by .58, lowest walks per nine, hits per nine, and whip. He also had the highest strikeouts per walk and was only four and two thirds shy of the most innings pitched so it's safe to say the Jays had the best number one out of the group. Moving on to the number twos, Gosman versus Cole and Christian Javier. While Gosman did have an ERA lower than Cole, he didn't have as low of an ERA as Javier, but he threw 30 more innings. Of course, you can make the case that Javier had the better season, and you would be right. When the two played, you could have banked on him having the better start, but having a guy for almost 30 more innings at a slightly higher ERA isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. That's innings saved that you don't have to stretch and try to find. Check out their war too, Fangraphs has Gosman at a substantially higher figure. Not to mention he led the AL with a FIP of 2.38, meaning he could very well improve on his 3.35 ERA from last year. Okay, sorry to break up the video, but I just wanted to say that I put a lot of time and effort into this video, so if you're enjoying it, please consider subscribing. I'm on the road to getting monetized and your support would mean the world to me. Okay, sorry, back to the video. And lastly, the battle of the number threes, Bassett versus Cortez and Luis Garcia. It's safe to say Cortez had the best season. For most of the year, he was unstoppable, but he's been dealing with some injuries and that could hinder his performance in 2023. It's safe to say Bassett is the number two out of these three, but you know what you're gonna get with the guy and that's exactly what the Blue Jays need. Someone who you know can go out there and give you six innings of two or three run ball consistently. That's why they gave him the three year $63 million contract rather than pursuing Stripling for much cheaper, even though Stripling technically had a better year in 2022. As you can see, the 1-3 through three of the Jays stack up against the Astros and Yankees. You could even say they have the best out of the bunch with a lot of stats to back yourself up. But as everyone knows, it's the 4-5 and five spot that things start to get a bit shaky. That's where the Jays lose the battle of the rotations. But it's a new year. When Barrios and Kikuchi make their next starts, they'll be tossing with zeros up on the board for their ERA. That's a huge mental boost. A lot of fans like to treat athletes like they are just there for entertainment, that they should never get into mental ruts. So many times I hear people say they're getting paid millions of dollars, so they should be happy no matter what. But these guys play the sport because they love it, 
And when things aren't going well, they aren't thinking about the money. They're thinking about how they're letting the team down. Kevin Biggio is a prime example of that. Barrios and Kikuchi always had to look at ERAs in the high fours and low fives on the Jumbotron every time they stepped on the field, and it definitely took a toll on them, especially having such high profiles with their contracts. If we look at Barrios' track record, we can see that last season was an outlier in a very impressive start to his career. His per 162 game averages from 2017 to 2021 saw him receive two all-star nods and ninth place in Cy Young voting in 2021. If Barrios is anywhere close to those figures in 2023, he puts the rotation in prime position to compete. Another thing I just want to note out is how people were viewing him as a dark horse for the Cy Young Award in 2022. When you watch him, yeah. Oh, this guy's an above average pitcher. Is that what you would say about him? No, he's no. got top of the rotation stuff, potential Cy Young stuff. If he gets it. Excellent. I remember watching this when it came out and it made me so excited about Barrios. But that was, that was short lived. Anyways, he still has that stuff. It's possible for him to return to a sub four ERA, leaving this rotation with the possibility of having four guys under that figure. Lastly, the number five, Kikuchi. He was a stud in the first half of 2021, but since then it's been poor start after poor start. However, this spring he's looked very solid. He's earned that number five spot. He has yet to allow a run in nine and two thirds innings pitched while striking out 13. I don't want to blow this out of proportion like I've seen many other Blue Jays accounts do, because it is still spring training, but it's encouraging nonetheless. He won't be the ace out of this group, he'll probably be the worst, but that's okay. Even when the Jays brought him in last year, that's what he was supposed to be too. If he can pitch to a 4.5 ERA, then everyone should be content. People tend to forget that a 4.5 ERA is just six innings, three earned runs when it's boiled down to it. That figure would give the Jays a chance to win most games he starts. Kikuchi is also the only southpaw they have until Ryu and Tiedemann figure into the equation later on. So it's a nice change of pace with all the other guys being right-handed pitchers. As for most seasons, there will be underperformers and injuries out of the group. So any good pitching staff must be prepared for the worst. And the Jays are. When you look deeper into the next guys up, they have Mitch White, who will start the year in the bullpen and have a similar role to what Ross Stripling had last year. Then Ryu will return from Tommy John surgery sometime throughout the season, and he can take some innings too. And the Jays' number one prospect Ricky Tiedemann and number three prospect Josfer Zulueta could have a say later on in the season. 2023 is a chance to be the most complete rotation the team has been able to field since 2016, and it's been a long time coming. I have to commend Atkins and Shapiro on this. They get a lot of hate from most, but I think they're building something special in Toronto. Let's just hope Rogers continues to spend. All right, that's it for this video. Now that you have a more in-depth understanding of the Jays one through five and their six, seven, eight, nine, let me know what you think in the comments below. Can they compete with the other top rotations in the league? Again, these types of videos take a lot of time and effort and I'm on the road to get monetized so I can finally get rewarded for all of this hard work. So your subscription truly would mean the world to me. And hey, if you made it this far, you definitely liked it. I plan on posting at least four times a week, and with baseball season coming up, you're definitely not going to want to miss out on all the latest Blue Jays news and rumors. I promise I won't disappoint. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.